Well, I want to say good morning to each and every one of you. It's 1130 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the East Coast. I don't know what time it is where you are, but I'm here in Atlanta, Georgia. My name is Larry D. Reed, and I am the host of Larry Reed Live. It is your most favorite entertainment news and talk show that is on these social media streets. You absolutely love it more than anything. You're addicted to it. You can't stop watching it. You can't stop hating it. You can't stop being critical of it. You can't stop loving it. And I'm so glad that you can't. Take a moment right now, click like and click share and let everybody know that we are on to have a discussion about something that has hit the Internet. See, it has to be public before we discuss it here. And we discuss it in a humorous way. It's going to be comedic. It just is. Sometimes it gets serious on these streets, but most of the time it's entertaining. Now, LRL behind the scene. Patreon is different. I want to take a moment right now to thank the patrons of this platform. That means those of you, before they send a day, you get behind the scene exclusive information and interaction with the community. In this community, we share some of everything, financial wealth, financial and spiritual wellness, wholeness, stratagems. Physicians come over, therapists come over, and then just some of your most favorite online influencers like Tasha K. She's going to be with us tonight. That's right. If you sign up right now and become a patron, you'll be able to hear that private discussion. It won't be like the interview we did out here. It's going to be more intimate. Tasha K. Unwind with Tasha K. on tonight. And we do that type of thing all the time. Last week, we talked about how to get out of debt. I gave you an offer, how to pay down your credit card, your house in seven years. We had a guru that was over there. That video is over there now. When you sign up and go over there, swallow all of that down. Swallow all that down. Get that information. So become a patron. How do you do that? Go to LarryLive.com. Look for Patreon or just type it, the, this in your browser. Patreon. P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com backslash Larry Reed. That's like L-A Reed. R-E-I-D. Live. Larry Reed Live. Patreon.com backslash Larry Reed Live and sign up for the annual so it never changes for you for the center day. There are 1,400 of you watching me now between YouTube and Facebook at 11.41 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. I need for you all to hit like and for you to share. Tell Naughty Dot and Never Done About It that Larry Reed Live is on. And I want to thank you to each and every one of you that will be hitting like and hitting share code that is supporting this platform. And those of you that support this platform monetarily, that means every time you see me go live, you send it to the MBN Network that stands for My Breakthrough Now, something I started in 2015 because I had a vision that in 2020, the church was going to change. And so after 20 years of pastoring traditionally in a church, I went into the cyber world and set up the MBN network. And I began to do my preaching in this comedic way. And so whenever you donate, you are donating to that ministry. That is still a online church and have members and everything, but this is the entertainment land. So when you come over there in Patreon, you'll get to see, okay, now this is more spiritual. They have prayer every week and everything, prophecy and everything's going on over there. So whenever you donate here to Larry Live, it is going to the MBN Network. So thank you so very much for donating. Every time you see me live through Venmo, MBN Network, that's two ends, M, Mary Boy, Nancy, Nancy, MBN Network, whether it's Venmo, Cash App, I want to say thank you. And those that do it through the website from overseas, LarryLive.com, click and donate. And those of you that text in your donation, 404, mm, oh, 404 800 Is that the text to give? The moderators in there, they'll tell you. I thank you for all of it. And all of the older LRLs that send in, you know, um, all different stuff through the mail to 780 Monroe Drive, 244224, Atlanta, Georgia, 30324. Thank you. All right. Now let's get into this conversation. I ain't got long because I got to go somewhere. Do y'all remember the little boy? His name is Kelante Gavin. I just learned how to say his name not too long ago. So if I mess it up here as I'm sitting here telling you this story, charge it to my, my head and not my heart. You know, because I have a speech impediment. 
And I was telling somebody the other day, they didn't even know that the the reason why making up words and names was something that I always did because I had to go to speech therapy when I was a little boy. That's right. And so that's where that came from. And I learned to embrace it and just say the words the way that I said. If you listen to my parents talk, particularly my mom, you'll see that she has one too. I only know she recognizes and see it as see it as that, but she says some stuff that just ain't right. Don't the syllable is wrong, the vowel is wrong, the noun is out of place, it is broke. The, if even the consonants be broke off. So that's where it comes from. So I might mess Kalante Gavin's name up a little piece. And sometimes when it's hard to say a name or to remember one, I just make up an entirely different one, which ends up being comedic. And today we may be comedic concerning the Kalante Gavin story. I don't want anybody to feel a certain kind of way. This is what I do. Now, what we do not do here, and if you're a follower of LRL, you know this ever since 2015, we do not speculate when it comes to people's sexuality because if you ain't... She's almost said it in an uncensored way. Let me do it in a comedic way. Because if you're not gobbling their peen or splitting or buttering their bed basket or just playing and rummaging through their soft middle part, bouncing around on their chest meat, if you're not doing any of that, it ain't your business what they like and what they doing. Now, once it come out, we can, we can do jokes about it, you know, all day long. I mean, <laughs> But we're not going to make you the butt of a joke, you know, that insinuates something about your sexuality. And that's not how you recognize yourself as publicly. We're just not going to do it. But when it comes out or is alluded to, we are going to enjoy, whether it's a picture that you don't put out or whatever, we're going to have a good time with it. And I hope you... um. Oh, I saw what you said. Somebody said, if there's a story that Kalante's trying to get in front of, Larry's not going to tell it. That means you really, you probably a patron or either a member of the My Breakthrough Now Network. You really know my spirit. Thank you for that. Thank you for sharing that in the comment section. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're exactly right. I would never share it. And I would come out here and let's suppose something come, will come out later. I come out here like that. I never knew and, and could have known and seen the text message, the video and the picture months ago. I told y'all that's the only time I'm going to lie to y'all out here. And the other time I'm going to tell you the truth. But I will make like I don't know something that I really know. And that's just how it is. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. It's just how it is. All right. Let's get to this here. So I wasn't minding my business like I love to do. But minding my business is not what pays me. Um, so <laughs> I was minding my business, you know, because I like to mind my business. I really do. Whatever you got going on is what you got going on. Ain't got nothing to do with me anyway. I'm going to my man. Now, I have seen Little Calante because I don't know if y'all remember the video. There was a video that was out of this young boy with a book back on, leaning over, bent over. Well, now that not all makes sense, but you see, there I go. I, I done started cutting up. And so you have, you have to allow me to do this since he's done put it out here. Let me... I'm, don't judge me too bad. It's comedy. But it had a boot sack on his back, bent over, land over on cross the thing. Um, but he was bent over in front of a woman and was singing a, a song. I can't remember. Was it? Hold on for a minute. I think the song's trying to come back to my memorization. So hold on for a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Um, I've had some good days. Ain't that it? I've had some hills to climb. Hallelujah. I've had some weary days. Yeah, 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 yeah. James Hall Vibrato, remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. Some lonely sleep. Well, we know a couple of nights you was not lonely and won't. You know, let's not even do that because y'all not going to understand my humor in that. Anyway, so I'm going to let you hear what he said to a particular gospel radio personality. There's a multimedia personality like myself that I'm not going to call his name and give him free advertisement because there are times when I see that um, my stuff is echoed and my name ain't called, so I ain't calling your name neither. I want to say the N-word, but y'all know if I do that, I mess with my monetization, so I'm not going to do that. It was, I won't complain. God! 
vibrato. Been so good to me. Although my weary eyes, they can't see. Oh, yeah, he was in the, that was him, right. See, Lakeisha, mom, you didn't know. That was him in the cafeteria. That video went everywhere, everywhere. Oh, I want to say. But you know, he ain't do it like that. Because he know he got all them twists and turns up in there. Well, he was sitting with that particular personality who name I ain't going to call because y'all be calling my name and over there on TV one, the rest of y'all, y'all been taking the stories and stuff and doing it like they y'all broke the story or whatever and it be mine. It's like, it ain't really mine. These stories is everybody. But I know y'all be learning it from me. And y'all be saying my name. So I ain't saying y'all name. I ain't saying y'all name. But anyway, a little tiny, little short, a multimedia personnel is about the same height as as um um Kirk Curtis Curtis Franklin little short little um uh, exercising all the time I enjoy his stories I go through his stories all the time I enjoy his stories and for all the ladies and the men that want to go on IG and look at some thirst trapping at his best you can go to this particular now if y'all write his name in there y'all write his name in there but I'm not saying his name because you don't be saying my name. They didn't say my name over there because y'all copying me. And it's all right because you got to do whatever you got to do to stay relevant. Um, he do a lot of thirst trapping. It shows his thighs. It shows his his, his bread basket. Um, it shows his bulges and his chest meat and arm stuff. So, let's, and I know y'all be looking. And you can't help but to see it. You know, I'm not one of them guys. Or maybe it's because of my molestation and what I went through, which makes me, I'm going to get into that when I'm talking about Kalante. But if you've been following the platform for a long time, I done told my story. So I'm not going to make this about me, but I, I probably ain't going to hardly be able to hip it. But I'm not going to make his story about me. But you can't help but to see it when you go over there on the, that particular person's multimedia person at the radio host. You can't, they be naked. And it'd be a bit over and, and uh, uh, exercise. Uh, uh, uh. So to know the first thing that you're going to be thinking about is, I wonder how they like it when they, I wonder do they sound like this when they, I wonder what this look like if he will, you know. But that's all part of marketing. I be trying to do it sometimes, but I got folk around me that the moment I post, so I take that down. I'm like, well, I got to do a little bit. I just want to put on my gray sweatpants and just stand in front of the mirror. And take a picture so everybody see because you got to keep people lusting at you a little bit they got to laugh at you and lust at you a little bit they got to think that you powerful and anointed but they got to lust at you a little bit that's what these preachers be doing how about maddie m-a-d-d-y now as tight as matthew stevenson shrek to be in his pockets you know that's part of the marketing show you a little bit make you think about me a little bit what i'm off, off topic let me see if I can get back to the topic. Or this sort of goes with the topic. But I'm not going to make this go with this topic. Let me just get back to what I was doing. So anyway, a little time to um, uh, interview person thing is like um, short like Curtis Franklin was interviewing him. I don't know what this platform was. I don't know if it was for Radio 1 or what. But mm -hmm, Christopher, that's who I'm talking about. Um Mm -hmm, but need to be. That's what I'm talking about. Can y'all put all of the um the patron and the donation thing in there? Cause people be asking. So I need for y'all put it in there. Anyway, and somebody sent it to me. Now the person that sent it to me said something I'm not gonna say, but they sent me the video and I was blessed. So let's listen to it. Let's listen to what Kilante Gavin. There are 2,417 of you watching me between YouTube and Facebook. I need to ask y'all something. Why in the whole hell in the heaven y'all got a problem with hitting the like and hitting the share? Is that what y'all do when y'all go to the pastor's churches? That's the reason why they be, they be begging and fussing and coming up with so many tricks in order to get y'all give because y'all don't like to do nothing. And this is just free. Just hit like and hit share. That's all you got to do. That's why I thank the people so much at the top of the show that sign up for Patreon and that donate because y'all are special kind of people. Because the rest of these will sit right here and watch and won't hit like and won't hit share. 
I ought to fold my arms and not say nothing else. That's what I ought to do. It's free. Like and share. All right. And for those of you in Patreon tonight, we'll be with Tasha King. All right. So let's listen to what little. What is, how do you say his name? Kalante. I almost said Katrina, but that's too early to joke with that. It's too early. All right. So um, let's um, listen to what Shem said. This is too early for that. Y'all want to know what he said. Now, I'm pretty sure Kalante is young, so he can take all of these jokes. Some of the rest of y'all can't take these jokes. But um, so I'm not even going to do them. I'm just going to think them in my mind and not let them come out my mouth. All right, so let's go. <laughs> Thank you, Belter Slain. You liked and shared. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. All right. Thank you, Bridget Sewell. You liked and shared. You did it, eh, Christian? God bless somebody doing because I see the numbers going up. Okay, good. Thank you so much. So let's listen to what he said. Here we go. 21 years old, I went viral at 15, um, but the documentary gets to take you before the cafeteria video, how it was growing up from 5 to 12, uh, 13, 14, and you're going through life as a kid being molested, man, by a boy cousin in the family. Like, how do you maintain that? And the preachers say that the hand of God is on your life, but somebody... Wait, let, let's let's look at how powerful this is powerful. This is power during fall. Now, number one, for a man to tell the truth that he was touched as a child, that's big. Then for a man to tell the truth that he was touched by another man as a child. Now, he went viral 15 years old, so this molestation happened when he was really young. I'm going to try to tell the story without retelling my story. If you've been watching, you already know my story. Because my molestation, in fact, my earliest thought, and I want you guys to really wrap your head around this. I don't know Kalante's story outside of what he done said. But my, my Larry Reed live earliest thought is the smell of another man's crotch. Probably my former wife is sitting in here. She probably know the statement I was about to make. Because I've said it so many times, even when, the 20 years of me pastoring a, a church traditionally. I don't think you could ever imagine, unless you have experienced that, what that is like, where your first thought in life is a sexual thought. And that sexual thought is a has a smell to it. For me, it has a taste to it. My earliest, before I think about my big wheel that was yellow, white, and blue with black wheels with... um. And white in that side, and the middle part was black with a red dot on it, which my grandfather, who kept me like this beside him most of the times, outside of the times I was getting molested, he didn't know nothing about. That's your earliest thought. That has an impact not just on your mind for the rest of your life, but who you are, how you think, how you process for the rest of your life. No matter how much Jesus anointed and power with God you have, that thought, the brain remembers that thought is most impressionable in the first eight to 12 years. It remembers that thought. So for Kalante, now I was exceptional because when I, I was young, I got saved at 15, I started telling everything. I stood up in testimony survey, I turned into me and Lisa, she's in the chat, was having sex and God had delivered me from fornication. Everybody knew I was going with her. You know, and I was saved at the time, but I was still fornicating because she took off her clothes one day in front of me to change her clothes. Her mom and dad was not at the house. Thank God both of them gone now because I would hate for them to find out that their daughter was so so, so sneaky to change her clothes in front of me, but naked, no one would try not to have no more sex because we both were saying to be shouting around at the church. But Lisa ain't going to tell your testimony. I'll let you tell your testimony, but empty way. So for this young man to tell that, number one, he was molested, ask your nearest man. They're not discussing that. I don't care if it was a woman or 10 women doing it to him. You know what you should be, you know? Be like, yeah, 10 women was on me. I was on one, but 10 little boy. I was, I had swag at the time. No, they're not going to tell her because that thing, where that thing do to you, to you. 
Then the teller was a man. Let's listen more to what he said. Let's go. Say that the hand of God is on your life, but somebody else's hands are in your pants. And so it took it took a couple of years, man, for me to see that what had felt good from being five to 13. And then, you know, you're making up that this is OK, that it's OK uh, for same sex attraction. It's OK to operate and still sing in church. And hold on, hold on, man, hold on. That's that's it. This now. Hold on. Hold on. I'm, I'm here. There's some stuff he still got to work through because it's, it's something he said that ain't that. But anyway, let's let's get back to the meat of it. He said God's hand is on you, and then somebody else's hands is in your pants. Now this is very interesting. He said, and that it felt good. Now I don't know if y'all saw me on T.S. Madison's platform. T.S. Madison was born a man, but is a whole woman, chest meat and all, except she kept her peen, which is a whole nother conversation. But on that show, and she had two or three, um, Milan Christopher, who's, a, 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 I think, I hope I'm not wrong, but I think he's a gay porn star, I think. But if he's not a gay porn star, he's a gay icon. And then two other people that was up there, and they started to sort of make fun, and Maddie sort of got upset and corrected them, because I said that the molestation, it was a relationship, it was my first relationship in my life, and it felt good. And then, like I said, something wrong. Now, now you don't hear Kalante Gavin and they clown me. I think she still got that up. And Kalante said what is the truth. For everybody's traumatic sexual experience, it is not horrendous. It is not horrendous. It's not. Oh, he is a porn star. I don't know. It's not horrendous. If it's horrendous, then you're going to go tell somebody. <laughs> Let's just think about it. You have, you know that lie that we tell all our children when they're getting their shots? God knows I did it. Oh, it's not going to feel bad. But then at some point in time, I had to say, well, it's going to hurt, but you need it. It's going to hurt, but you need it. That's my baby mama right there. She said, Oprah stands by this. You know, somebody said, I'm teaching. Am I teaching? I don't mean to be teaching. But it's just that thing just on me. The teach and the funny. Preach is just on me. He said, God's hand was on you. Somebody else's hand was in your pants. Now, that's a preacher being a wordsmith. Because he wouldn't have said that back then. I don't think he probably had that kind of mindset to be able to discern the difference between the two. I know I did not. And... That's just good wordsmith stuff, and that's good to use, and it's great and sound, sound really wonderful. But, but then he said it felt good. I thought that was a powerful moment for him to make that a part of his conversation because you don't even know that it is wrong. When I say wrong with quotes around it, because I'm, I'm talking to everybody. Everybody in here is not Christian, and every Christian in here does not believe that the Bible is applicable for today's living. So I'm saying it the way that I'm saying it. It wasn't until, and I'm not mentioning any of the people names it was in my family. I've already had that conversation with the people in my life that I needed to have the conversation with. At that time, it was my wife um, when I decided to start talking. It was my parents. Now, some of them went and ran their mouth and, and kicked up a whole lot of mess, which they should not have done. But I understand. Ain't none of us. In fact, I probably talked to some folk I probably shouldn't have talked to because everybody is not ready to have that conversation. Because the person that goes through the trauma, and I know this hard to believe, is really the only person that can handle the trauma. There's so much I need to, so many, a caveat I need to put with that, but I ain't got time. I'm just going to throw it out there like that. So for him to say that it felt good, I think that was interesting. There was something else that he said caught my attention, but I'm going to just go past, past that. We're going to listen some more. Come on. This is okay. That it's okay uh, for same sex attractions. It's okay to operate and still sing in church. And nobody knows nothing because you're gifted, like gifted and talented and anointed. So they say, 
the hand of God is on your life and God's going to use you. But what do you do when you're broken on the inside and you have not confronted some things? Um, the, the danger that the church did and they do to most of my generation is that they put weapons in our hand before our times. Before they give you a gun, you first got to know what it is and how to use it. So what we yeah. do is we put them behind the keyboard. We put them behind the drums. We put them behind the microphones and we not ask or get to see okay how healthy they are not just how gifted they are i was broken man um i was i was like singing in church i was i was sinning in church i was slipping in church because i didn't want to confront a a an abuse sexually that happened to me from five to twelve and so it was a hard thing it was hard to confront it was i think that Kalante gavin is on a good path now i can hear some things because of um it happened to me and then everything that happened subsequently. I can hear some things that let me know that this is still a journey. There are 2,936 of you watching me between YouTube and Facebook. Everybody hit like and share again, everybody in this conversation. God, I think it's a conversation a lot of people, male and female, need to have. But I, I, he's on a journey. And I, and I remember some of that thinking. Let me tell you what, about it. He said... Because where he's at right now in his life, he sees, he's talking about the molestation. And then it sounds as though he's alluding to some same-sex attraction. Now, let me say this for every person that cannot say this, who care more than I do. If you were molested or had a sexual experience with somebody of the same sex, you don't ever forget it. That don't just leave your mind, especially if it felt good. You don't ever forget that. For some people that have that experience, they leave that experience, whether it was one time, 10 times, the first 10, 12 years of their life like it was for me. And then they're may able, they may then go into, now I got to say the 15 years old, so Jesus had a whole lot to do with what I had going on. They may then be able to go into what we may call a normal life or normal sexuality. I got to share something with y'all that Candace Owen said that I thought was very powerful. Yeah, Candace Owen. Um, and then some, it may be the catalyst in that by which they then begin to go and explore and they may find out that they may be same gender loving and not attracted to the opposite sex, which will make them homosexual or gay. But the sexual experience itself, now this is what I want to say when I did not always know this. The sexual experience itself may not be tied to the lifestyle that they choose to live, whether that, is, whether that is straight or gay. Your sexuality isn't only determined by your sexual experience or your sexual, I'm calling sexual conditioning. Because the molestation itself is a conditioning. In fact, if you have, uh, there's some of you that have only had sex with the opposite sex. There's some of you who've only had sex with the same sex. And because of that conditioning, that is what you like and desire. There, the truth is there's some of you having sex with the same sex but actually have a desire that goes beyond same sex activities. And there's some of you that is having sex with the opposite sex, but actually have a desire that goes beyond opposite sex activities. And you may or may not never discover or explore it. And that's your choice. And that is absolutely okay. You probably will not explore opposite because either your faith, your belief, your conviction of the Holy Spirit, the Bible, teachings, or what have you. But what we got to stop doing is thinking that people who were molested or raped by the same sex, that that automatically mean they are gay. Can't do that no more. Can y'all type that in there and say, we can't do that no more. Because that's, that's first of all, it's, nine times out of 10, it's not even true. <laughs> and we just can't do that no more. Because if we do that, then people, men and women, are not going to tell their story. They're not going to tell it because they, on top of being judged by being a victim, now they have to be judged by, well, what you like now? 
since you had a peen forced in your mouth, Larry Reed, do you still like putting peens in your in your mouth? If anybody ever come and tell you, oh, maybe I shouldn't say this. Maybe I should keep it out then this let stay, let you wonder. But I'm gonna tell you this part. If anybody come and tell you talking talk about that I is out there in them streets putting pings in my mouth, random pings in my mouth, even casually pings in my mouth. You need to know that is a tale. The only way that I would get to doing that, you had to suck mine first. You suck mine first and over and over, then that might. Let me quit playing. You know, because I, I tell another joke and I tell <laughs> some other stories and them things that went viral in there. So let me just not even touch that. Let me just not, just let me not even touch that. But if you suck mine, I might suck yours. All right, but anyway. So let's continue to talk about <laughs> Somebody said, I am dead. Well, that's what you come here for. Somebody said, Larry, you a fool. Well, that's what you come here for. Evangelist Robin Campos posted a very open statement. She said, I was molested by both sexes. I know I got a testimony. I would love to hear what you have to say. You She probably in these, um, in these, hold on, what is this? Did somebody call me N-I-G-G-E-R? And is that a black person? That is terrible. How come YouTube and, and Facebook don't block that? Oh, you know, they probably can. Because y'all can really do that. If you see a comment like that, when they're using some kind of word like that, you know you can hit that and then report it. They won't be able to comment for a long ways. All right. Listen, listen to what else that he said. Hard to go through life. It was hard, man, trying to, to, to sing to people, man. And you see their tears fall out of their face because they're feeling the anointing and the presence of a God that you can't feel. So what do you do being 15 and you go viral and everybody feels your anointing and everybody feels the anointing that God gave you and the anointing on your life works for everybody else except you. So I Now, we already done heard it over here. Y'all remember who we heard that from? Do y'all remember who we heard that from? We heard that from Leandria Johnson. Remember when I asked her, I said, I said, how can somebody take pain and sing it like it's joy? She said, no, it's joy to you. It's still pain to me. Remember when she said that? I get that. You know, because there have been times I get on live and y'all are laughing, crying, and you getting healed by laughter. And I'm actually in a space in, in my place where I don't feel that happy. I don't, feel, I don't feel that good about what's what's going on. Or I just don't feel good. Especially one time there was something I was going through with a family member. And I was sad. Now, I did not realize it till way later on because I'm, I'm a dude. So a lot of times, you know, it, it manifests in different ways. And it was later on when I realized, oh, this thing hurt me. Okay, I get that. But I knew I wasn't I wasn't myself. I was still doing the prayer on Sundays. I mean, folk get to live. I'm hearing God. I'm giving the this at the Lord. But there was still something that was going on in the inside of me. I was, and I was just sad. For most men, we don't get too sad. We get the mad first. Oh, for me, I go numb and I don't feel. And then eventually when I start feeling, now that I'm older, I, I allow it to come straight to sad before it would come to mad. And so then everybody thought I was real mean because I, I'll just be acting out and just, I've been rough. But now I, I allow it to go to sad. I don't feel like it's it's a bad thing for it to go to sad. But a lot of times it manifests like that for men, be mad. And then it's really sadness upon them. So mine was, is numb. And then I go, I feel the emotion, I was sad. But I was up here making y'all laugh. I was on the prayer line. Ah! Ah! The Lord said, hallelujah. You know, and in that moment, I mean, I'm, I'm in it. But then at some point later on, I get back to the sadness. So it takes a lot of work and it takes having somebody you can put your hand in, typically a therapist or your support group. You need your therapist and your support group. People you can talk about whatever's going on in your heart and in your mind or in your head and what you feel. So I think that as time go along, 
and what I've noticed in my own life, and I, I, I'm trying not to make this about me, but this, I can't help because I'm sort of connected to the story, so I can't help but use me as an example. As time went along, I learned, this is what I learned. I learned that I am the most important person in my audience. Ah! Oh, that was powerful. That's going to help some of y'all entertainers and people that be on the stage and people that are influencers. It's going to help y'all. I am the most important person in my audience. And what that means? What that means is I had to make sure that I take care of Lori. How my DC cousins call my name. Lori. <laughs> I had to make sure I take care of myself. So I use all my gift things, all my talent. Sometimes I make myself laugh. Sometimes I speak with myself. And sometimes I just take myself out. I really received the prophecy from, um, you know, because the ministry I'm a part of um, do like how the NBN Network does. You know, you, you, you support with a donation. If you're a patron or a member, then we have staff that call you, prophesy to you, minister the word of the Lord to you. So the ministry that I give to do the same thing. And in that time, back to back, it's like the Lord was speaking to me. I know the Lord was speaking to me through them. And they were saying, do something. And then the last one said, "Do." she gave me this, uh, an instruction, a directive. She didn't just say, do something for yourself. She said, go take yourself shopping. Now, that's specific. Now, anybody that know me, I'd be quick to spend some money on you to help you. But then when it comes to spending on me, I'm like, mm, I don't do I really need I can wait. <laughs> I don't have that spirit no more as of 2020. Because when she told me to go spend my money, so spend some money on myself, I purposely to go do it. And what I done, I just followed what it is that I like, what I saw. I was in the store, I think I was in Dosa and Gabbana, and I went right in there and I said, That is sick. And she said, Well, this is off the runway in this XYZ amount of money. And I heard that prophet in my ear saying, do it for yourself. Do it for yourself. And I did it for myself. So I think as time goes along, Kalante is going to realize, and I hope Leandro realized this, that it's extremely important for you to take care of yourself. And if you can't use your giftings and your anointing to minister to yourself, that means something broke. So you need to go to a therapist or and get your support system together and start learning how to minister to yourself. You got to remember the audience of one is you. It ain't nobody else. It's you. All right. But Kalante, hats off. You know, started this conversation. It should have been been had. I'm gifted for everybody else, but I could not see. Wait, what I'm in is like, this is not healthy. Like, it's, it's, it looks good, but on the inside, man, I was broken. So yeah, I've always heard it. What was wrong? I mean, we know, hey, a man and a man, you know, as a kid, that's not it. Or, you know what I'm saying? Woman and a woman, that's not it. So it's preached against. But what are you doing? They're preaching against it, but you also see it in the church. So okay. it's kind of confusing to a young man or a young woman because the thing that your pastor or the preacher is preaching against is all around you. So it was a dichotomy to accountability. So I couldn't receive it coming into my 14 and 15 year old self. You know what I'm saying? But but yeah. it was it was definitely challenging. You know, the world saw the viral, but God saw the violated. What do you do? What do you do when, when you're confused yourself, when you're broken and perversion is so interwoven in your DNA? See, so he, he's talking about he's he been confused. I guess he's he's a le I'm I'm alleging rather that he was confused concerning his sexuality. And you know, I, I didn't experience that. Um only because of the type of person I am. I'm still this person. I think confused people that have been molested that have same-sex attraction go into a confusion because it's like a war between their faith and the Bible and themselves. But see, I never, I never, I'm not gonna say I never had a passing thought or situation that come in, that, that I experienced, but that wasn't me. It's still not me um, to where what this is how me and Jesus is. 
God tell me and talk to me and tell me what he want for me to do and what he would like for me to be involved in and participating in. And then I follow that thing through. If I have a desire or a thought to do something else, then me and God gonna be in the conversation about that thought and desire. And I ain't never heard, I will never forget this, listen to this. There was a time I was very addicted to pornography. I mean, I would say that I was a sexual addict, although it wasn't approved, meaning some nobody validated, to where I, as long as I was climaxing, let me just give you a visual. Can y'all see this? You see all this melted stuff? Climaxing. Let me one more time so y'all get a visual of what I'm talking about. I want y'all to be clear on what I'm talking about. You see all that? Look at that. All of that. The spilt. Yeah, climax. Long as I was doing that, I ain't really have to eat. I'm, it was just, in, time was just in between. So I say, add it. And put that to the side, got saved. 15 years old, got married, 19 years old. My, my former wife is in here. We've been married for 18 years. She went to, the internet came out. I got into the internet and I started getting back into it. And we had, by this time, I'm about to start a church in a, a building that was on that property that we bought. It's a long story. And I was going over every day in the morning at five o'clock and praying in the midst of going through that struggle. And what ended up happening when she left is like my mind cleared. There was something that happened in our marriage. Ain't nobody's fault. We were both young. But it injured me. And then I was like, I don't understand what's the point of, of getting married if you still gonna, I mean, if you, I thought it's supposed to be like my mom and dad and them. You know, ain't no nothing like you, this will happen or that happened and hurt your feelings. However, and I'm like, well, and I chose, because my mind I'm like, I'm doing what the, the Bible say. There were some things that I I was about to get into doing before I got, say, to 15 years old and exploring myself. But, you know, I, I grabbed hold of you and now I got this wife and now we don't run into these problems and, and I feel like I'm the one that's hurt, you know. So, mm. so then I went into that thing. And so when she left, it's like my mind cleared. And I'm like, oh, my God, I've been tied up. And on this internet, this porn stuff. And I remember going on my face and me talking to God. Because that was the one thing I did not discuss with the Lord. Now, I had talked to him about my molestation. I had talked to him about what was coming in my mind and coming in my heart, the things I was doing. But I never discussed this porn thing. Because it was like a new sexual thing. Hello? Who was that? Wait a minute, I'm on live. That's my baby girl. And I, so I talked to the Lord about it. And when I did, the Lord was like, well, what took you so long to have this discussion with me? And I began to explain. I said, because I didn't know how to bring it. He said, but you would come to pray to ask and find out what to preach and what to prophesy. How come you didn't discuss this? I didn't know how to say it. And then the Lord said to, said to me this. Actually, he didn't, it ain't what he said at this moment. It's what I felt from him because I knew the Lord. I felt his heart like turn like this toward me. Like, I know you the one that's so embarrassed and concerned about this and feel real nasty, but I'm not concerned. It's like he turned like almost into me closer. That changed my life. And I, remember, I jumped up off the floor, ran to the door of the building and looked back at my prayer place and was like, okay, that's another spirit. I'm, I'm, I done got over into whirling this so bad to where I'm feeling like God don't care about what I did when I know I'm supposed to be feeling bad and, and be convicted. So I went, I stood by the door a little bit. I walked around, you know, and I was like, oh Lord, I got demons. You know, because that's the stuff mom and them were talking about. Because you, if you, you reprobate, you feel like your 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 wrong is right. And so I went back on the floor. <laughs> when I got back on the floor, I felt that 
him like turn like that into me again. I said, oh, Lord. I said, God, but wait, 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 wait. Is this you? Why I feel like you pull closer into me? He said, because I understand what, you, what you're feeling about yourself, and I don't feel like that about you. Cheering, totally change how I prophesied, how I preached, and how I dealt with other people. It didn't overnight. It took a while. I was, I was so addicted to being so mean and judgmental. Totally change how I view God. So I think a lot of times what ends up happening with people that have been through unique things like molestation, same-sex attraction, um, pornography, alcoholism, drug addiction, or maybe you were the one that molested somebody. And that's why I pulled this up here by Travis Gatlin. Here's another discussion also. We are always ministering to molester, but there is almost never ministry to the molesters, specifically children that have been victimized as a result. Or as a result, they victimize others. Because that's what happened. That's what happened. They say I shouldn't talk about this, but I, I will. Um, we have to heal the minds of each parties as well. Both need serious help. Yes. Now, this, this, this is a, an important conversation because what happened to me, now mind you, this was happening in my family. There's so many other people in my family got this same experience. What we ended up doing, it was generational. So you got my mom and them generation where that stuff happened. And I know they dealt with each other. I know all about them stories because some of them told me. Then you got their children where they dinner with each other. And when I say dinner with each other, I mean they messed around and violated each other because somebody from their generation violated one of them. And it happened over and over. Now, none of this felt like violation until after it was over. Now, there's some in my family that actually were held down and raped, you know, but that wasn't my experience. One demeaning thing that happened that I think a lot of times uh, played into me not realizing how important I am was when my cousins, um, they all lined up, about six of the, of the dudes. Now, mind you, one of them was already molesting me. And they lined up, and they all bent over. Now, you got to think about this. They all bent over. Young boys. Now, think about when, you, when, you, when you're young and you're a young boy. You know you ain't washing your bread basket. Bent over and made me lick. The one that instructed it to do it, I, I can't say too much because I don't want nobody in my family to, to feel a certain kind of way. Um, but whatever instructed to do it, little Larry, you didn't, little Larry, you, ah, we're going to make you, I remember licking Duke and Droplets, Duke and Droplets, stuck in hairs. <laughs> It's probably why I clean mine. Oh, Lord, I think I just got a revelation. Cause listen to Michael and them must always say, because I always tip, because I do this. Let me tell you what I do. I will get a piece of paper towel. And it's real ghetto because I just got alcohol wipes to try it with that, but don't feel the same. And I will get 70 to 90% alcohol and put on paper towel many times a day and just wipe my whole crotch. Because I like the little bit of the burn. It feel like make me feel like I'm clean as a whistle. But, you know, I just sit here telling this story made me think about maybe that's the reason why I clean mine so good because I feel like that I don't want to have that experience that I had because they made me lick the most nasty bread baskets. Lord have mercy. And you see, I can talk about it. I ain't always been, I'm, yeah, I'm 42. This happened when I was a child. I don't work through all of this. So I can even joke about, I can joke about it myself. It wasn't nasty. He was nasty. So anyway, I don't know how I got into that story. I don't forgot what I was talking about when made me get into that story. But anyway, it was a whole experience and I would not forget it. But that made me start being intrigued because that's how I ended up started sniffing seats. I remember when folk would come to the house as a child, I would get into that scene 
and sniff that say, oh, a bus thing, ma. Larry, what you doing? Squint, sniffing the because I was I had to lick butts. So I was <laughs> so then it was a <laughs> hold on, let's see what this person oh this is powerful. I'm 48 and I can talk now because I'm no longer embarrassed, but say come on now. Somebody said I may need to come back after my food digest. <laughs> Oh, this is powerful. That's what happened in my family. Mm-hmm. Everybody was fucking everybody up. And they didn't mean to. I know they didn't mean to. I had an opportunity where I was able to talk to one of the main. I'm, I called them my molester. It don't even feel right. Because like Kalante said, it felt good. Now, some of those just you come in and we listen to the audio from Kalante Gavin. You're going to need to go back and listen to that. Because it didn't feel like that. It almost felt like love and protection. Because what ended up happening, I ended up turning to a very mean young man to where I began to beat up everybody. And those of you in my family, you know about this. Because of all of that stuff that ended up happening, I started being a fighter. And I would, I mean, I sent two or three people to the hospital from fighting as a child. And because I was so full, filled up with anger. So, um, one of the molesters, I don't know if they were able to detect it or what. This the way that they dealt with me was not bad. It was like, you know, let me pull you over to the side and anybody to bother you, it's all right. You know, I remember everybody be playing basketball, and I was in between the older cousin and younger cousins. Me and my cousin Kevin was the only ones that was he's he's a rapper and works with BETs in DC. But only me and Kevin was the ones that was in between every generation. I don't even know what his story could be. I'm pretty sure he got a story. So what ended up happening was I, I wasn't old. I wasn't old enough to play with them with the basketball. So like, get off the court, get off the court. And some of them would be some of the molesters. But him, he was like, we we play later. And so he would play with us later on. The younger ones would play with us later on. And they all didn't start seeing that I was. Um, for the anger until I started whipping for hand part. Then, then versus them using me for sexual stuff, they started using me to beat folk up in the community. So there were stage fights. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> there were stage fights. Okay, Larry going, oh, your cousin, he from D.C.? He, he got, I mean, this guy with the nunchucks. He had nunchucks. So Larry, he can, Larry can beat him still. <laughs> Larry can beat him still. So then they were... I want that boy hit me with nunchucks about two or three times and it made me so mad. I beat that boy to death. <laughs> but they were like, oh, we told you you were going to get him. But they didn't realize I was mad at all y'all niggas. That's why I beat. No, I done lost my monetization. Lord have mercy. I just love this word. Nigga. I don't know why this word just blesses me so good. I don't know how not to say it. I want to decide this for folk that cuss. They can't stop cussing. I love nigga. Can y'all just bless my platform right quick so I ain't got to worry about monetization so I continue to say nigga? El Frida, Benita, y'all, can y'all put that down there so people can bless the ministry? Because I want to say nigga. Them niggas didn't even know that I was, I was mad at all y'all because I, I was confused. They didn't know what was going on. So then I started, <laughs> so I said, me too. Ain't it the truth? I love nigga to Tony Street said, I love, I love that word. I love it. I don't like N-I-G-G-E-R. Don't you say it like that, son. I'm, I'm a good attitude. Don't say it like that. You got, you got an N-I-G-G-A. Don't, don't, don't use the N-I-G-G-E-R. And that's a whole nother word. A whole nother word. And so, <laughs> anyway, you know, I should have, let me hush my mouth and save all this for the... You got to get in Patreon because if you don't, you're going to miss the reality show we start taping for in just a few days. You're going to find out so much stuff about me presently, past, everybody around me. This is going to be an exceptional reality show. So I'm just going to stop. I'm just going to stop talking right now and just leave all of that for that because it's going to be so good because what they're going to be captured, I've only been in this house for a few months, and this is an Episcopal, Episcopal residence, meaning the residence of a pastor that's in the church. So me and Shemako are the pastors of the prayer prophecy side of the My Breakthrough Network. Of course, I've run the entertainment side. And 
Uh, so that means he gets to move and take over this Episcopal. I'm not good with that word. And I told y'all at the top of the video about my tongue, Episcopal residence. And I'm going to another Episcopal residence, but I'm changing the bottom part for Larry Live show. So what y'all going to get to see is basically me, me. I chose this place before Lisa came. And Lisa in June decided to say, okay, it was my former wife and the mother of my children. We're going to move in together to raise your kids. So you're really going to get to see the beginning of that. Although you know it's already been happening. You're going to see us moving into this place for the purpose of raising our ch children for the next few years. And you're going to get the entire story. You're going to find about our past marriage, how we broke up, what caused the broke up, um, everything we've learned on an individual basis, and anything else that come that come out of that. You may see one of us dating somebody else or dating each or, or I don't know if you can see us dating each other because I don't think that one of us is in that headspace. We're not in that headspace. We, you, you, I mean, you're just going to see whatever our life is. Oh, you can get behind the scene Larry Live. There's some plays and some shows and some stuff I got to do in LA and New York. The camera crew will go with me there. So you get to see all of that. So I'm just going to quit talking. And what we're going to say is hats off to Kalante Gavin. Can we all can y'all tag him and say, you know, we're proud of you. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, you join patreon.com backslash Larry Lap. Um, can y'all tag him and tell him that the LRL celebrates his, the conversation that he has began and that he started having here on in the social medias? You should have had it with us, it would have been better than going over there with what's the name. Now he good at what he do, but he ain't Larry Lap. So you should have probably went to both of them. Yeah, it's fine if you went to him. But you, now you need to come over here and have the conversation with us. Now, that's if you read it. You know, because you got to be ready to have the conversation with me. Another sign that your child is or have been molested, peeing in the bed consistently. Hmm. Somebody asked how old our children is, 13 and 16. Um, somebody said, best episode so far. I got to talk about this therapy. Superb. Somebody said, nobody beats Larry Deary. You got that right. Thank you for the donation. I see the four ninety nine nine ninety nine dollars in YouTube. But you know, they take 30% of that. That's even before I do my to room and tie. You only folk got their mind. One thing for sure, two for certain. You, Larry Reed, is starting to resemble the most trusted name in prophecy. I resemble him? You know, a lot of people say we look alike. We went out to eat at um, Ruth, Chris, or the Del Fris Frisco, one of them places here. And they thought we were a family. I said, no, we're not family. We ain't no kid. But a lot of people say that. We both from North Carolina. We both prophets. And, and so many things similar. Um, but we're no can. No can at all. Larry is the force the earth has been missing. Phoenix, thank you so much. You know the Phoenix. I'm very attracted to the Phoenix. And when I read the story of the Phoenix, I see why. So y'all tagging Kalante. Let's make sure he know that we think what he said and done was dope. And because of that, I might listen to his music. I don't know not any song he ever sung in his entire life. God bless his ministry. Somebody tell me one of his songs. I don't know, not now. Let me tell you why a lot of times I don't be knowing the gospel folk songs and stuff because I can't with that. I can't with this old job. Your message got to be empowering and uplifting. I just can't with all this sad kind of going on. I do not like that kind of music, let alone if gospel supposed to be listening to me, uh, lifting me up. I can't. Oh, I'm, I'm seeing texts from people saying this discussion is so needed. Folk, I ain't heard from them in a long time. Oh, okay, that's good. So y'all really enjoy. Oh, no ordinary worship. Hold on for a minute. How did that song go? I, th I think I've heard that. It's Nancy. No ordinary. ordinary. Hold on. I don't know that song. How, did, how does it go? Yeah, yeah. 
No ordinary worship. Why I feel like I know that song? This ain't, give me the words more than that. I'm thinking no ordinary love. <laughs> this is no ordinary love. I know that song, Sade. No ordinary. Oh, I love the, the, the title line. This is no ordinary love. No ordinary love. Oh, I love that song. Don't y'all like that song? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I say I don't know his ministry. God bless it. But I don't know his song. I don't, I don't know his song. But he can sing. And somebody better tell him though he need to quit um singing right high. He he got he got his chest his he got a mixed voice like Donna McClurkin. You know, Donna McClurkin is a baritone like me. Um, but you know he a soprano in his soul. In the soprano section. But anyway, um. Let's not get stuck on that. God bless. We love you, Uncle Aunt Donnie. Um, Larry, how are you going to start singing the wrong song? I'm hollering. I, I thought I know it. I thought I know it, but I don't. I don't. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't know. Well, y'all know I always cut up with Uncle Aunt Donnie. Always. I love Donnie McClurkin singing. I don't like him. Let's make that clear. Until he fixed that, he know he got to fix. We will forever. It'll be a forever fuck you. <laughs> you fix that, we might be able to start over. Until then, but I love you. you know, and I cannot like you and love you and respect what you do. Donna McClough is one of the greatest voices in our world. I absolutely, he is oiled down. I love Donna McClurkin singing. I don't like him. I don't. Mm -mm. I, I don't care if anybody knows it. I don't. I don't. No, I don't. I don't like him. Same thing about Kim Burrell. Oh, I should have said the difference between Kim Burrell. I don't like what she did. I thought it was dirty and nasty. Highly respect her gift. How can you not say this girl can sing? You sound like one of the people where if I don't like you, then I just discredit everything you do. I, I just ain't made like that. No, you know, Kim Barrett or Don McClurkin can sing. I think Kim is rude and I think she, sometimes she's cold. But I can't say I don't like her because she's funny. Now, she probably wasn't funny. I probably say I don't, I don't like her neither. But Kim Barrett is so funny to me. <laughs> it's church funny, but it's funny. She's funny to me, so I can't say I don't like her. And that's not a case where I don't like her. I just don't like what she did. Okay. Yeah. So, God bless Uncle Aunt Donnie. And God bless Kim Belly Barrel. All right. Somebody said now, um, Deidre Hatton or who or however wasn't Deidre Hatton or however you spell his name. What do you say about Deidre? Now wait a minute, you know I like Deidre. He's a little religious with his worldly self, but I like him. Deidre or what? How, let me see. Deidre or whatever, however you spell his name, ain't fooling nobody. He needs to bring his behind on out the closet. You know, I'm Victoria that ain't right. So we don't do that with him. Now we'll make jokes. About folk. But we ain't gonna be pulling and dragging nobody out no closet, especially if we don't know if a closet exists. And Deidre clearly likes puss, several different kinds. So I don't know about that. And if you do enjoy a little ping every now and then, that's his been till it come out, it ain't ours. Um Oh Lord, these, these folk are coming out the woodwork with this spam. Somebody said, You think he's religious? Not surprised. Uh huh. You got to listen to him. Deidre Hatton is the most religious, worldly person on the face of this earth. 
He is so expanded in his views concerning some things and other things. It's like, are you in the 1960s? Yes, Sarah Mia, with your fine singing self. Let me get you off my page before I touch myself. Um, I'm just playing. Can y'all when y'all allow me to just do comedy without me having to explain everything? This is comedy. It's comedy. Just ain't, just ain't no. All right. You know what? <laughs> you bet. Variety back puss. Oh my god, he like it. I'm trying to tell you, they ain't nothing. The uh, um, Deidre Hatton. Oh, he loves. He loves what God made. <laughs> yes, he religious world. Some of y'all confusing the feminine spirits with sexuality. Keisha Capers didn't come here. She came here. She came to teach the people. She, she came to teach the people. All 2,788 of y'all that's on Facebook and YouTube right now, she came in to teach. Cause she teaching right there. Cause they got it confused. They got it confused. Uncle Larry, Pastor John Hannah says, laugh and move on, laugh and move on. That's what he's at. Okay. All right, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to first post this link for you guys to sign up to Patreon. Tonight, we're with Tasha K. Now, if you're in Patreon, Tasha K may not be the interview you want to watch tonight if you look. But then again, I don't know. Because the way my stuff is set up, it can start out one way and end up a whole nother way. So you don't want to miss anything that may come. I'm going to talk about Candace Owens later. I got to post what she said first and we discuss it in, in the chat. And then we'll get to, um, we'll, we'll discuss it on a live like this, okay? Um, yeah, so if you want to join Patreon, Benita B just put it up there for us. Thank you so much, Benita. I'm going to be doing something for all my um, mo moderators because you guys do a great work. And thank you so much. So that link is in there now for you to sign up. And if you decide that you want to donate while I'm live now, here's a link for you to do that as well. The Georgia votes have already recounted. Biden still has this, this state. Somebody just asked me. But you're going to be surprised. because This video Candace Owens put out, I'm going to post it in about 15 minutes. Of course, there's some sideways stuff in there, but there's some things that she said I happen to agree with. And you're going to, too. So, um, so I'm new to Patreon. How I get notified? You got to download the Patreon app on your phone. And then go into your settings, whether it's Android or iPhone, and turn your notifications on so that you don't miss anything that's posted there. All right? I'm a Lamont Moore said what she's saying in the video. Didn't I just tell your hind I'm going to post it? Give me a minute. And I got to go somewhere. Somebody waiting on me now. I got to go hit somebody's life. Okay, so let me. Um, Y'all go shout this. Yeah, I posted on Bobby Brown's son passing. I'm not talking about it. I just did too much death in 2020. I'm praying for Bobby. I don't want to keep talking about death. If you notice, a lot of these great giants people been dying. Some I post, some I don't. I just ain't got time for I can't. I can't. I can't. And I don't want people coming here for coming to be uplifted and be informed to laugh and learn. And then I got a whole lot of death, you know, but, you know, I have to talk about what is out there, but I, I don't want to do that. This ain't no ordinary worship. This ain't no ordinary song. The God I serve is greater than, nope. I don't know his music. I don't know his ministry. But, you know, his inbox is going to be so filled up. Because after he told this story, I went and looked at his page. And the boy is bow-legged. Now, I don't know if y'all understand what that means to tops, to women, them two. His inbox is going to be filled up with tops because they they're hoping that he's a bottom. And they're going to also be women because they're hoping that he got a, 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 a baby arm between his legs. It's like a, a bow leg woman. I'm going to tell you what I think 
when I see a bow leg woman, I can't I can't even say it because there's no way to say it in a in a in a PG way. But when you I see a bow leg woman, I think a certain thing. A bow leg man, that's that tops. They hoping that he like his bread basket rummaged through. And the women, they hoping there's a baby arm somewhere. So his DMs are filled, gonna be filled up. Somebody, Keisha, let's see so what Keisha said. Keisha said, bow legs are what? You know, you can't, who is you? You came here to preach today. I'm trying to tell you, this is what women think. I'm trying to tell you. Somebody said, there ain't no PG way. <laughs> Please, Mar Marty, y'all need to stop assuming he's gay. You're reaching plus he ain't. Now we don't. We can't say he ain't. He can only say he ain't. But you're right, Marty Ford. I need to stop assuming. Is it? And what? It ain't your business unless you're going. You trying to hit him up? Then you need to know before you go embarrass yourself. But other than that, you ain't got no business. To, it ain't your business. Wait a minute. JC said, I'm bowleg. See, if I won't busy and have nothing to do, I probably will go to your page. And it doesn't even matter how you look. Well, you, you could be a, a, a six or, or a 10. You could be a three or a bowleg. It's going to make me look. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. Somebody said, I don't even care. I ain't giving him my puss. This is an LRL. You see this? This is on the opposite side of my screen. It's hard to point at it. This here, that's an LRL. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, see, my baby mama said this. Legs are not on my list of things because I have found out things are not what they appear. <laughs> I don't know if I should laugh at that because see, I'm slightly bullied. But you probably not talking about me because mine is very slight. Um, see, there's a certain type of bullied sister. I try to tell y'all, y'all think I'll be talking. I, I got four, three, two sisters, a mama, two daughters, a wife, well, a former wife. I can't believe I said that. I've had a wife. And a church full of women I have. I know what I'm talking about. I ain't no woman, but I know that. Oh, God. You get, oh, now this is a truth. This is a truth. Lord, this, this conversation has turned into a Patreon conversation. You got to look at them hips and crease dip. And I know exactly what you're talking about. I know exactly what you're talking about. I don't know Tony Street. She said you can't judge a book by the cover. You that, you ain't taking enough information because that cover tell you everything. You got to look at the car. Walk by that car, look in there. That lets you know how clean the house is. And how clean their house is might determine whether this person has a scent or a stench. Now, everybody got a scent. And it's a body older. And it can become attractive if you're in a relationship, you want to smell their odor. Well, at least to me. But there can be a stench on top of that stench that come from years of half washing. Years of half washing. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot take off years of half washing in one night. Listen to me. You cannot take off years of washing in one night. Now, see, the other person, one, one person may not even notice, but if you with me, Cause I'm a taste you. I ain't got no help in this church is quiet. I'm a taster. There ain't no such thing as us being together and I'm not licking some part of your anatomy and I'm a licking taste. And you can't take off years of half watching in one night. I don't care if you use Clorox wipes or anything else they come out here for the COVID-19 or whatever. You can't. 
One lick. Uh, let me know. If you've been watching all these years before tonight, don't you try to get rid of one night with me. I'm a new. I'm a taster. All right. Let me let y'all go. That's too much. We're going too far. I got to get off now. Goodbye. See you later. God bless you, Kalanta. Y'all tag him. God bless his ministry. We love you. God bless.